Hello and welcome to the Xenothesis podcast. This week in episode 24, we're covering the last chapter, chapter 9, of part 4, Training Floor of Book 1, Dawn of the uh, Xenogenesis Trilogy by Octavia Butler. And uh, I, I'm joined for this last part of the book, by, as always, by my co-host. Michael Glinka. Hello, everyone. Here we are. So. The last chapter. Yes. Oh, man. What a journey it was. Yeah, and we get an interesting little sort of twist at the end. I don't think we quite saw that one coming. Uh, no, I honestly but, uh, was not ready to um, uh, for that. Like, I don't know. It just feels that it, it. I don't know. Maybe it was predictable that something like this may happen, but mm. I did not see it at all. Yeah, I mean, you you don't seem to. I mean, it doesn't feel like something that's going to be there in in this time frame, right? It it feels exactly, uh, exactly. like something that might happen eventually, but not something that might happen like right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that's that's correct. Um, I mm. I generally was not expecting this. You know, you know my my last predictions. I guess maybe we can jump on my predictions, and then that will probably explain. Yeah, so as usual, we've we've kind of got ahead of ourselves at the, yes. at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. The twist we're referring to is the fact that Lilith is pregnant. But uh, yeah, let's um, uh, go back to to Michael's predictions for this chapter. So I, in my last predictions, my last episode prediction, I thought that it was it's time to prepare for them to leave the, uh, for Earth, right? That 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 was pretty obvious. Um, but with the recent events and people knowing that something is different with Lilith, and you know, it's not just like the um, her attitude and the, the relationship with Don Kali, you know, people were avoiding her. And I thought potentially um, the decision would be to keep Lilith behind because Gabriel will try to kill her on the earth when once they get there. Um, but that's just because... Uh, that was my own... The only reason why I thought that was just because th- there was danger behind... Uh, you know, danger, Lilith's, Lilith's life was in danger, but not what the chapter was actually going... I uh, don't know what the chapter ended up with. Ah, well, I mean that—that that seems that was you know accurate, right? They kept her back; they didn't send her down to Earth, and it was more or less for her own protection. So I think you were—you were right about about that point. Yeah, but it, yes, I—I yeah. I would get, say I would get 50, I get fifty percent out of it, but uh, not the full marks uh, on prediction. Yeah, well, I mean, like of the predictions that you made, they all came true. You just didn't—you—you you failed to predict one other thing, which I don't. <laughs> it's. <laughs> Hard to score prediction accuracy if we uh, include all the things that you failed to predict. <laughs> no, to be honest, yeah, I, I, I think overall, um, I just my timings on predictions were always a bit off. I guess. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's trickier to uh, predict that them with a specific time frame accurately than to predict that they will happen at some point, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The nature of the thing. I, I guess that I guess that's what you know that makes uh, all of the future tellers and stuff like that you know, always correct because technically they are correct, but it's just the timing is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's a question of degree with the timing, right? <laughs> mm. You know, if there's no margin of error, everybody is a you know you can tell the future. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> That all the people who predicted the uh, the world will end were just uh, you know out by a few trillion years and the heat death of the universe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but you know, there's been so many for and uh, world ending predictions like 1990s, 2000, 2012. I remember 2012 because it was the most I think popular one because of the May uh, the ca- Mayan calendar, wasn't it? <laughs> it's just honestly, yeah, I mean, every- there's always a million of them. Yeah, there's always more and more coming through, and I don't know how people still believe that. So, but anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, uh, it, if you want interesting stuff on predictions, which is not the subject of this podcast, read uh, Philip Tatlock's excellent book, Super Forecasting. Um, I think he has a co author on that, and I can't remember who it is, but yeah, moving on. Moving on. So, should we start the chapter nine summary, the final chapter? Yes, let's do that. Sure. So um, the chapter continues with the story from chapter eight. Um, people, it's still uh, taking place in the camp. Um, people are avoiding Lilith because, according to Lilith's suspicions, they think of her as a traitor or a ticking bomb. Um, but Lilith was sort of content with all that separation. She could, you know, focus on herself on everyday tasks. You know, chopping wood, gathering wild fruits, trying new things. You know, like new method of catching fish with like the long nets uh, sleeve. Um, hmm. 
the, the way she described it, you know, made it out of tough grass and vines. Not many people wanted to be taught by her anymore, which to her surprise were more punishing for her because um, actually she found that she enjoys teaching people. Hmm. Um, there was a little point I wanted to put out here, and mm-hmm. that um, she, um, it was just, she, this was more punishing to her than to the Oan Kali, since she had discovered she liked teaching. But it, it's interesting that she's thinking about it in terms of um, uh, punishing the, you know, the goal of the Oan Kali that the humans should learn how to survive, mm-hmm. as opposed to from the perspective of. No, this the fact that humans won't be learning skills that they need to survive. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I think it's a it's a nice little kind of additional. There's a few kind of subtle beats in this uh, chapter that kind of illustrate the you know, the, the distance that's kind of uh, been put between Lilith and the other humans um, by what happened to to Joseph. Um, and this is a, a nice little subtle one where you know it's, uh, she's just kind of not thinking about this in in terms of the. Uh, the needs of the humans, but rather the goals of the Owen Kali. Mm, mm. But I guess it makes sense, right? This whole her attitude at this point, because she was betrayed by almost everyone. Although the only thing she was just trying to do is explain everyone, keep your long game face on, and just mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, wait. I'm just a, a sort of um, pointing out the way in which the writing is mm. is, is mm. highlighting that to us. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Um, so eventually, um, some people started approaching her. Actually, you know, some like Alison, Ray, Leah, Victor, um, to, to be taught or to ask her questions. Uh, but her best friend Tate stayed away from her, and Lilith suspects mm. it's because of Gabriel. Either something Gabriel said to her, or just trying to maintain the same sort of, um, or supporting Gabriel because of support of Gabriel. Um, the only person left for her as a friend was Nikanj, and although it didn't try to change her attitude and behavior towards uh, um, towards others, right? So it, it's even though you know sometimes I would say personally that sometimes friends are there to either to listen to you or give you advice. But I think here Nikanj was just there to so she can talk to mm-hmm. someone still, right? As a friend, yeah, so. uh, maybe not even talk to, but just you know be present, as it were. Yes. So this is uh, a short description from the book. She lay with it and its mates at night and it pleasured her as it had before she met Joseph. She did not want this at first, but she came to appreciate it. Then she realized she was able to to touch a man again and find pleasure in it. Um, And yes, that was um, a very short moment when um, I think uh, she was passing something to Victor a cassava or something and yeah. she accidentally touched his hand but she didn't feel that repulsion that usually um um she used to yeah yeah so it it seems like that nikan just kind of lifted that effect to some degree lifted yeah. the spell yes yeah um and when she asked about it um nikan told her that they are planning to awaken more people soon so she'll be free to choose whether or not she wants a partner so you know that allows her, you know, to touch and everything. So it allows her to, be, I don't know, find potential partner. Mm. But also, the, from the fact that she stopped teaching people here and that they're learning much more slowly. Um, but that that's the reason why they're more awakening more people. But because also they're going down to Earth soon. Um, mm. But then it was called by another Uloi and the conversation stopped midway. And yeah, I said it's a little. Um... A little vague as to how much time has passed here, but it does seem quite uh, quite soon after Joseph's uh, death that the uh, Owen Carly are kind of uh, no, moving in on the possibility that she might uh, find another human partner. I think um, the book indicates few weeks. Um, mm-hmm. At some point, there's a paragraph a few weeks later, basically. Uh, half past, ah, okay. A few weeks past, uh, have passed. Lilith, on the other hand, um, while Nikanj was taking away, seeing there's nothing to do in the camp, decided to just go for a walk and find something interesting, you know, just to look around the island, maybe find something interesting, some fruits, food, whatever. And this is where the book gets interesting, because as she returns to the camp, she finds herself in a completely abundant uh, place, uh, with only one fire still lit, and Nikanj sitting by it. Mm. And there's, a, there's an interesting little point, another little thing in the writing here, where um, so there was only one fire and only one person near it. As she reached the fire, the person stood up 
and she saw that it was Nakanj. And there's you know, person is used twice in that sentence. Mm-hmm. And the you know, the use of person in reference to Nakanj is another nice little uh, subtlety in the writing that kind of indicates the kind of increasing acceptance that Lilith has of the Arankali as you know, the, the people. Which is, I think, interesting point, but like um, towards the end of the chapter, it contradicts what Lilith's saying to them, right? Hmm. I mean, I think that's that's part of the. Uh, it, it, it's going in both directions at once. There, right? It has this. It has this kind of, it kind of emphasizing the tension that exists, right? Mm-hmm. Because she's she's getting closer to them in some ways, and she's been pushed away from the humans, but at the same time, she's still very, like, acutely aware of their alienness and mm-hmm. kind of repelled by it. So it's a. It, 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 there's that sort of. I think a very realistic tension mm-hmm. between those two things, and yes. you know, the the more time you spend around something, the more acclimatized you become to it. Um, and uh, beginning to think of the Owen Carly as people just makes sense, and they are, you know, like they're clearly intelligent, sentient beings, so it makes sense to treat them as people. But uh, at the same time, you know, they have this this very very alien way of thinking and very alien biology. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, you're right. And there's, this is where Book um, describes the whole situation. Lilith dropped her basket and ran last few steps into the camp. Where are they? She demanded. Why didn't someone come to find me? Your friend Tate says she's sorry for the way she behaved, Nikanj told her. She wanted to talk to you. Says she would have done it within the next few days. As it happened, she didn't have a few more days le- here left. Yeah, so it then proceeded mm. to tell that Kaguya enhanced uh, Tate's memory memory to help her survive. But when Lilith asked why is she still on the ship, Nikanj tells her that it's because to save her life. Few of the humans were already planning to her uh, to kill her, and that's where uh, that's when it was called back to, you know, by the other Ulo at That point when he was having uh, conversation with Lilith earlier on, mm. that was the point where the the Ulo told her that. Uh, some humans are planning to kill her and mm. Nikanj didn't want to her to react badly on the news that she's not going to earth because of some humans trying to kill her um, because it thought in turn would make her hurt or end up like Kurt you know trying to fight the humans and or maybe potentially even kill them therefore mm. preventing her to go to the earth ever forever yeah which is I don't know it feels um a little paternalistic to me because like Lilith has never really demonstrated impulsivity, right? She's been pretty restrained. And, Absolutely. So, so I think even if she'd received the news in in the company of the other humans that she was being kept back from Earth, I, I don't think she would have lost her cool sufficiently to have killed anyone. Yeah, which is surprising, isn't it? Because I mean, so far Nikanj has has had like a proper understanding of Lilith, I'd say, more or less, right? Um, sometimes, right. I think uh, sometimes it, it's it's kind of spot on, but other times it, it really doesn't get it, I think, uh, which again kind of m- makes sense, right? It, it, it has the, uh, it, it doesn't have the inside perspective to kind of really empathize with humans, but it has the advantage of the outside view, so it can kind of see some of the the stuff that we might not see well about ourselves so i think it, it has the it has that kind of peculiar mix of occasionally being very good at predicting what humans will do but also um missing some important points <laughs> i guess so i guess yeah. so. i just always think of back to the situation with paul titus um how accurate um Nikanj was then oh, when yeah, telling yeah. kaguya off but uh, it's definitely better at it than any of the other Owen Carly, as far as I can tell. But mm. um, yeah, it's still not quite. You know, it's not quite perfect. Plus, I think it's probably overreacting just a little bit because of the situation with Joseph. Right? It's yeah. it's, it's leery of. Um, yeah. Who knows? Risking. Maybe you know. Like, although Lily has not shown any impulses, maybe something could break in her when you know hearing that whole information, and she could go berserk. Maybe. Yeah, it doesn't want to take the chance that yeah. she might get um, angry. I, I think also because they, they kind of failed to predict that this would happen with Kurt. So there's a bit of doubt Yes, yes. in them that they actually know what they're doing in terms of predicting how the humans will react to one another. Yes, absolutely. So Nikanj then continued to tell Lilith that the moment they reach Earth, 
um, then Kali knew that the humans will try to escape them. The original plan was to Don and Kali were planning to tell the humans to take whatever they needed and go if they want to go, um, but they would be welcomed back any time. Um, but it asked Lil's opinion throughout this whole conversation if she thinks it's a mistake to tell the humans that. Um, and this is just short script from the book. Um, you think it would be a mistake to tell them? Why bother asking me what I think? I must, I want to know, I want to know, Lilith? Do you want them to come back? They will come back eventually. They must. Unless they kill one another. Silence. Why must they come back? She asked. It turned its face away. They can't even touch one another, the men and the women. Is that it? That will pass when they've been away from us for a while. But it won't matter. Why not? They need us now. They won't have children without us. Human sperm and egg will not unite without us. And I think this is a big, big thing that they're saying here. Um, mm. that the fact that humans cannot join, uh, cannot make ch- uh, uh, offspring without mm-hmm. the presence of Don Kali. Yep, this is the, the hold that they uh, will have on them, I think. It's the, the way that they will get them to come back. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, if we're, when if people want to be able to reproduce then they will have to come back to the Owen Kali. so it's a it's a it's a big one it's a biggie uh, yeah absolutely yeah. and i think a little later at the end of the chapter reference this that back um in a way hmm. to the answer to the to that conversation Lilith then tells uh, nikanj that they shouldn't tell them to return and not to be too obvious about helping them to get getting away either um, the humans need to decide what they want, like because if they decide to come back, it must be from their own will, not because they're obeying the Don Kali. Um, mm. Because basically, if they did, that would get them killed, and many and not many will come back, only a handful. Um, mm-hmm. Some will think, Lilith says, that the human species deserves at least a clean death. And this conversation with um, Nikanj. Is it an unclean thing that we want, Lilith? Yes. Is it an unclean thing that I have made you pregnant? She did not understand the words at first. It was as though it had begun speaking language she did not know. You what? I have made you pregnant with Joseph's child. I wouldn't have done it so soon, but I wanted to use his seed, not a print. I could not make you closely enough related to a child mixed from a print. And there's a limit of to how long I could keep sperm alive. And I think that's when I read this, I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, that uh, hits you with kind of a curveball um, right there. And it hits Lilith as well, because uh, she has that same reaction, just like, uh, you what? <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. You uh, what, uh, mate? And you get like the... Um, I don't know if this was in in cinema or something, you get the impression that like if you were from Lilith's perspective, things would go into soft focus and you get like a ringing in your ears or something. Yeah, you know? basically, just, that's exactly like, I what. It's just just kind of utterly uh, surprising and disorientating. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, here I was like, oh wow, okay. So um, it explains how it did it as well because it preserved Joseph's sperm. For mm-hmm. I don't know, we say a few weeks. That I think by the book describes. So, and then there's a limit of how long it can keep the sperm alive, which is very interesting because hmm. I I um, like I mean we know of in vitro fertilization, right? You can extract yeah. the nucleus out of the sperm, right? That's what happens, and you inject it into the oocytes. That basic. That's the basics of IVF. Hmm. But I'm. I suppose there's. I mean. Usually, though, if you're going to keep sperm for a long time, you freeze it, right? No, 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 so yes. So I'm assuming that um, it's being kept at uh, within, probably within um, the Kanji's body, I would expect. Yes. It has some kind of a uh, an ability to keep it there. Like some sort of tissue or something, yes. But mm-hmm. what I'm trying to and say are, is that... There are uh, quite a lot of animals that do that, actually. There's quite a lot of animals that can store sperm from a single sexual encounter mm-hmm. and use it for a long time after. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. No, but what I'm trying to say is that, first of all, when did it extract the sperm cells from Joseph, right? Um, uh, it, yeah, that's, um, I'm not sure. I don't think I, we I were would... told anything about it beforehand. 
Uh, no. And then secondly, like the fact that the Don Kali can modify the genome, right? How mm-hmm. can it not like um read the sequences? I mean, it could read the sequences because obviously it made the um Lilith pregnant and you know impregnate her while she was I don't know being pleasured by the Don Kali. But like, mm. what I'm trying to think is is like, can it not not like take a copy of what the sperm contents are? I mean, obviously it's probably millions of sperm cells but um you know yeah the sequence sort of what, is why there, it right? can't make a child from a print as it were is a an interesting question yeah. but i mean i suppose it might be some, just something to do with they don't understand well i mean then they're, they're doing the genetic mixing with the other own carly so, yeah mm, so yeah. you know what i mean like it's it's like it didn't want to use the print to use the print like the copy of joseph uh, mm. sperm cells to um to in on Lilith, so you had original sperm cells, but at the same time they have the ability to read the sequence of those um sperm cell DNA, and mm. therefore it should be able to just copy it. And then if it wanted, just I know. I mean, uh, maybe I mean you could probably concoct some kind of a technical limitation if you wanted to come up with a justification for. Yeah, it. I like, guess um, so. Say, I mean, maybe they need the 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 sperm to fertilize the human egg um, and to undergo the, the, the um, uh, usual kind of recombination process and mm-hmm. the, the zygotic genome activation and stuff. They need some of that. They need a, an oocyte or something. I mean, a, a, um, a zygote, rather, a fertilized zygote before they can do their genetic engineering to work with. Or, you know, something like that, rather than um, they, they like starting from the, the, um, the uh, separate sex cells is a problem for them in some fashion. Mm-hmm. Uh, right you can come up with something that's an excuse but it I, doesn't seem like it would be that valid of an pl- excuse plausible was, yeah yeah um for them to be able to do this kind of um like cross-species genetic engineering work and not be able to solve those issues mm-hmm. but i mean you never know it, it's uh, well it, that's the thing we don't really could be know something. <laughs> uh what's yeah. what's the onkali can really do so mm. I guess it's acceptable ex- uh, excuse and explanation, uh, but it feels like for me that Nikan should be like this should be able to um, I don't know mm-hmm. copy. Yeah, I, say, at I, least... I definitely have a a lot of more technical questions about why you can't do this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Considering that you know we can't do it ourselves in a way, you know, there are methods mm. of preserving sperm cells. Like you put it, you know, you freeze them down with a bit of buffer solution and liquid nitrogen, and it will last. You know, in the cold storage room for a long, long time. That's how people store yeah, in the sperm yeah. in the sperm banks. Like it's it's not really a a very difficult technology nowadays. Um, Mm-hmm. Um, and I think yeah. I wonder when this first sperm banks actually um, started on Earth. I um, mean, like just uh, properly. I'm not sure. I mean, I guess they wouldn't have long. I mean, I suppose you might have seen them before IVF was a thing, in anticipation that the possibility of IVF being a thing. But I wouldn't imagine they would be popular until IVF was developed, which was what i just checked um, and when was the first sperm bank created and it says in mm-hmm. 1964 uh, okay it was right. established uh for therapeutic purposes of infertility at iowa usa and tokyo japan on 1964 mm-hmm. so i guess i guess you know like the but technology is even older than that and we're talking about 1950s uh, you know the cryopreservation right so i mm-hmm. i suspect that this is yeah, but I think it's just it doesn't. It's not their style of technology, right? It's not the way they they do things, right? They they don't do like you know, yeah, cryopreservance. They do stuff biologically. That's the yeah. I don't know. It's a a bit kind of outside of the the realm of the way that they'd usually operate. The I'd yeah, I'd be kind of surprised if they suddenly started you know whipping out the liquid nitrogen. It, it seems a bit out of character for them. <laughs> yeah, true. But in the same time, like it feels to me that um having that biological advantage right that that organ that allows you understand and then if you combine mm. it with normal uh, scientific research procedure right like you know using equipment and stuff like that would really mm. really speed up a lot of things don't you think yeah yeah definitely 
like if you had like imagine the sequencing analysis we do nowadays right imagine if you could just put your finger in the sample and be like hmm yes i know what then and just you know like produce the analysis out of that and you understand it like in even more depth than you could normally do like right so mm-hmm. but I, and yeah and there's, it's like the difference between say looking at something and imaging something right so when you look at it it's you know, there's an inherent kind of subjectivity to it right and it's difficult to do like a, a quantification across multiple different um states if you're just eyeballing it yes, right absolutely. you need a camera that can that can have the same it's, it's you know it's doing the same visual information but it's capturing it in a consistent objective fashion that you can use to do quantitative comparisons between um between different states mm-hmm. which you can't do that well with your eye uh, you know you can kind of score stuff but it's not it's not as good as as a uh, as an imaging technology so it's the same kind of situation i suspect with the way the oan kali operate to some degree right i mean they they, they have this like genetic perception mm-hmm. but at the, you, you would at the same time want to have the the technological implementation of that as well so that you can get the, the more quantitative information but it doesn't seem like they've ever really gone that route i think because so much of their technology is um biological in basis yes they don't ha- they don't have that same kind of approach to things yeah absolutely uh, yeah i think it's actually it's, i think it also proves the point of like why don kali are missing few information or few things for, about humans mm. is that they don't have that sort of objective approach in a lot of things right yeah, they're, they're kind of, um, they don't seem to have, I mean, they have a lot of technical sophistication and they seem very capable at, at implementing stuff, but it's not, um, it's not actually all that scientific in their approach to finding stuff out. Yes. Right? It's, it's almost more evolutionary. Um, it's, it's kind of, you know, the understanding has kind of emerged from them acquiring and integrating new bits of stuff and exper- and experimenting in the kind of uh, more random exploration type way they don't seem to have as sophisticated a scientific culture like they're not kind of you know directed at finding stuff out in the in the same way they they do it through this trade they don't do it through uh the, what we conventionally think of as the scientific method it makes sense though because they are evolutionary sp- species right they, they use evolution yeah. as their own driving force whereas we are we humans and all the animals on the earth and all these organisms actually on the earth um mm. evolution is more of like a not a driving force but more of like a process that we are all under you know taking it's taking place all the time um mm depends on the timings of course per species but it's not something that we feel or we can control in any way in terms of like the onkali do yeah and it comes back to something we talked about in much earlier episodes but they have a kind of fusion between their mimetic and their genetic replicators right they 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 have genetic memory and they have uh, very perfect memory and and they their technology is all biological so they have this kind of like they don't really have a sort of as clear a separation between ideas and and genetics yes. almost as we do right at the moment because we don't have that sophisticated a genetic engineering technology there's a there's a decoupling between um and our our, our technological our mimetic our ideas um as replicators and our genes and they're kind of a little bit out of out of step with one another mm-hmm. but in the Alankali world they're much more tightly intertwined yes yes absolutely but yes this is one of our final last off tangent top uh, conversations <laughs> for this book <laughs> oh no the episode's not over yet oh no the, oh, yeah, actually <laughs> yes we, it's not over yet so we got plenty of room for more tangents absolutely <laughs> um so where next are we in the um... unclean Ah yes, unclean. Yeah, it's a, it's a um, it's an interesting choice of word there, actually. I mean, it's understandable why Lilith would call it unclean. What's happening between aliens and humans, right? But there's a lot of Which... situation at the moment in the world about purism and you know of uh, species, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Actually, it feels like um, so. I initially thought it came from from Nakanj, the unclean thing, but it's kind of in response to the end of Lilith's last sentence. Yes. She says, uh, a clean end to humanity, and then 
Nakanj is responding with, is it unclean? Yes, thing that uh, we want. That mm. I, the trade. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's uh, there's a couple of kind of slightly biblical sounding terms in this end chapter. There's the, the use of unclean, which is a popular mm-hmm. uh, a popular thing from the Old Testament. And then there was um, lie with, in reference to her um, being with Nakanj and the other Ankali. And it kind of had a that slight double entendre meaning of possibly being uh, you know, sexually close with them, but also just physically lying with them. Yes, yes. Um, so there's, you know, there's a couple of those kind of, uh, sli- you know, that, that slight biblical tone kind of going in there. So I'm not entirely certain what that's that's um, accomplishing, but it, it's interesting. Which is, I mean, yes, but like at the same time, like I, it's a hard topic to uh, the whole situation of like what what happened to live, you know, the pregnancy and the, the fact the child will be partially human, partially alien, right? Because mm-hmm. I don't know. I personally don't know how to feel about this because, in a way, evolution and changes to species and any species, right, is part of what the life is, right? You know, Mm -hmm. and things like this, right, are hard. It's a hard topic to converse about because some people, you know, say, like, you would say, yes, that why would it matter? For some many wouldn't matter. For some would matter a lot, right? Mm. Because it's mostly about you know it's familiar, it's there and stuff like that. Uh, I think it it can be related a little bit to um, if you think about it through the lens of, of moral foundations theory. Mm-hmm. And there's there's the uh, one of our kind of moral taste buds according to that model mm-hmm. is um, that kind of a purity sanctity kind of axis where you know, we have like one of the things that makes us you know reason about things from a from a moral perspective is you know do we think that they're they're pure or or, or profane in some sense mm-hmm. and this the like the emotion the, the feeling of disgust is kind of coupled in with that like is it something that we find uh disgusting or something that we find kind of uh you know pure clean um so and i think that's the point that you made before about some people would be okay with this and others wouldn't I think it comes down to that kind of like moral taste profile, yeah. right? It's it, it's the like, are you are you particularly sensitive to the the purity sanctity axis? Uh, is that something that that's that's shaping your your moral decisions? That's one of the things that that, that kind of tends to separate um, sort of clustering people who are more conservative and people who are more liberal politically. Is that the um, the liberals are kind of more sensitive to the care and fairness axes but don't really use the purity sanctity and authority moral axes so much mm-hmm. so when they're they're kind of reasoning about moral stuff and they they, they just they, they don't talk about it in the same language because they don't really um sort of use those moral senses in the same way like they still have them but they're usually sort of slightly slightly underdeveloped in the the liberals and they kind of give more emphasis to the the importance of the um the care fairness axis which which fits quite well with a kind of more utilitarian ethics which you know, I'm, and I, I i fall into that camp right i have that uh i'm less sensitive to the purity sanctity and more in the uh the care fairness mm-hmm. um and it's, it's these kind of personality attributes that are actually quite strongly predictive of political affiliation which i find an interesting thing but yeah i think that's one of the i think it really relates back to um the conversation we had a few episodes back about you know uh, i was joking about a sex cult uh if don Kali arrived on the pla- on the <laughs> planet right uh um, yeah yeah it's it's we've talked about this a lot in previous several episodes about what will happen you know if don Kali appear, appear on the earth before the war actually took place right yeah yeah, it's another one of those like if if you, you there's a bunch of people who are high in 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 trait openness in the the big five personality traits right they're open to new experiences yeah and this is an interesting new experience so. exactly so I just <laughs> that segment of the population so I feel yeah. it'd be um, I don't know it'll be interesting to see um, how at that point would this whole situation take place but yeah in this case though although as you mentioned earlier Lilith was looking at Don Kali as persons and here mm. the fact that 
um, Lilith is pregnant with Joseph's child, which will be human, but also alien in the same time. Is yeah, so it's not just hers and Joseph's, right? It's also uh, Ahaja's and Dishan. Yes, exactly. Um, but it's just the combination of all that is right. It's now it's unclean, right? So I think Lilith herself still isn't certain of her mm. own standing towards Don Carly in this whole situation, right? Yeah, it, it gives her a kind of, uh, like this sort of hybrid child, a mix of human and alien, gives her this kind of, she thinks you know, it's, a, it's a monster, right? She's, she's not um, uh, at all comfortable with this idea. Mm. But uh, I don't know, I, 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 I suspect that when, I mean, there's, there's the difference between interacting with, with that kind of, co- like the concept of this individual in the abstract, and then in the concrete, it'll just be, an innocent child right mm-hmm. so the uh you know it, it may offend that moral sense of 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 um purity sanctity but when it comes back to the sort of care axis mm-hmm. when you're actually interacting with that child it's just a child right it had no say in that's the, the thing that it's right? hybrid. yeah you i mean it's pretty obvious if you look from it that you no know, children have never had Unless, I mean, very few cases when the child is born as psychopath, which, you know, happens. But, like, usually children are have... The innocence is there, right? They haven't done anything. They were just born, mm-hmm. right? That was the result of two people... Yeah, they're, they're devoid of a kind of, uh, uh, like, a, a negative moral valence, right? Yeah. There's no... Uh... Uh, so how no, I mean, unless you want to get into like original sin and... no, no no I'm not gonna go there because that's I, I think that's completely irrelevant and especially in modern world but um, I it's just in terms of the perspective here is just like there's one thing you know I never understood why would children have to suffer because of their parents mistakes or events that happened to their parents right um hmm. And I, I'm talking about very broadly here because I don't want to go on certain topics that are referenced to it because I don't think it's appropriate and I don't have enough knowledge or experience about this. But it's just in terms of the result of a child being born, the child, if the child is being born, has done nothing wrong, right? Mm. Um, yeah. And in here, the situation when you have an alien human hybrid, the child hasn't done anything, right? It's the decision that Nikanj has taken and the decision that Lilith was not ready, f- sort of, in a way, for this whole situation, right? So Joseph only recently died and now she's mm. finding she's pregnant or she was being made pregnant by Nikanj with Joseph's sperm, so... Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it it's this this whole thing again with, with Nikanj. Uh, like, it, it, it said to her, that that she wouldn't be pregnant until she was ready yeah right a- until she kind of until she wanted it uh but it's ve- no, it's very clear that it didn't consult her uh, that's the about thing this. i think that's the whole situation about this is that a few chapters back nikanj goes oh you know you can't get pregnant but it's your decision when you'll get pregnant right it said mm. specifically that it's up to Lil because Lil's like oh you decide when and it's like nikanj was like no it's your decision whenever you're ready, you can get pregnant. That's the contraceptive. Yep. And now we have a situation that contradicts that. Um, it's mm-hmm. made live pregnant without even thinking about this whole situation, without even talking about, you know, it could have approached Liv and be like, Lilith, I still have some of Joseph's sperm cells. Would mm. you like to have his child? Do you think that you would like to have Joseph child and yeah and, and even would you like to have his child on the condition that it also be a a hybrid of a Hajus and Tishan that I will mix together uh, yeah which she would probably not have agreed to I, I I think yeah I mean like I think if you put this situation and this is the problem of the Onkali a lot of problem they say one thing they do another thing and it just causes constant issues like it's still that what's the word you used before that not condescending, but like not uh, uh, paternalist. Maybe paternalist, but more of like um, when you, you use the nice word. I don't remember it when you compared it like humans and look towards animals. Like you know, when something happens to animals in a zoo, is like I could have shown uh, known better, right? Like this sort of up, up, uh, attitude. Okay. Um, same mm. here is that like when they do something, it's like we do it because we know better than you. 
It's like looking mm, at the child, okay. right? Like it's 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 right, right. Um, uh, you know, similar like to like parent to child. I, so, so maybe it is paternity. Yeah, I don't remember the specific word, but <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. You know, that that kind of uh, sort of a no better condescending kind of an attitude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it okay. it just felt like mm. to me that this whole situation is like it could have been solved in so many ways. The whole. Um, but I think so. If we get into Nakanju's motivations here and kind of understanding, because I, I think it 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 this next sentence that it goes into. So you shouldn't begin to lie to yourself. It's a deadly habit. And then uh, the child will be yours and Joseph's, Ahajus's and Dishan's, because I've mixed it, shaped it, seen it will be beautiful, and without deadly conflicts, it will be mine. It will be my first child, Loth, first to be born at least. Ahajus is also pregnant. Yeah. So in that first bit, that you shouldn't begin to lie to yourself. It's a deadly habit, a sentiment I agree with. But the, uh, I think that kind of captures why Nakanj th- kind of has done this. I think it thinks that she wants this. Yes, but just before you, but, um, sorry, just before you um, continue, is that mm-hmm. is that um, just before that prog- fragment. Um, the reason why Nikanj wanted to give made pre, uh, Lilith pregnant was because she needed a co- she wanted to, uh, he wanted it wanted to have her uh, for her to have a companion and now the, mm. the and he knows that so he'd made it a daughter uh, and mm. Lilith is alone and lonely on the ship and you know whereas Lilith was having this conversation he started moving away saying that there's a monster inside of her that's when Nikanj pulls her back and says you shouldn't begin to lie to her yourself it's a deadly habit just to, to mm, clarify mm. on the situation, but yes, you're absolutely right, isn't no? Yeah, and and I think that so the, the Oankali seem to have this. They're, they're quite uh, keen on this almost like self knowledge notion, right? They 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 seem to have a fairly um, coherently unified mm-hmm. sense of self, right? And they the, they um, seem to have a fairly different understanding of like conflicts between being like um physiologically interested in something and being intellectually like willing to do it like making a kind of conscious decision to do it it feels like those things are almost not as as separate for them as they are for mm-hmm. most humans in some ways i think this is probably because of the the like the control that they have over their their biology to some degree because they, i think that they're just sort of less likely to encounter a scenario where they have a mismatch between what they're intellectually interested in and want and physiologically want because they can kind of tweak their biology a little bit and also because their culture is um kind of based around this whole um it's it's, it's sort of so intertwined with their biology it has this this very uh close connection so there's not like a, a disjoint between the ideas of what they should be doing and what their biology wants them to do which you know in humans you know, we have uh we have a so, some, something of an environmental mismatch with our biology in our current civilizational state, mm-hmm. right? Because we've done, we've created all kinds of super stimuli in our environment, like you know the the whole Mars bars problem, right? You've got these things that are sweet and salty and full of fats and have a you know like a great mouthfeel and they taste amazing, but they're kind of devoid of any like real nutritional content <laughs> yes. whereas in the ancestral environment those things like the seeking out those things would re- kind of relatively reliably lead you to something that was actually nutritionally useful but now we can manufacture stuff that no longer has that heuristic right looking for the sweet stuff and the fatty stuff and the zone is no longer going to guide you in the right direction with respect to nutritional content so we have this mismatch which produces a you know, a, a, a crazier, right? The difference between the the like an intellectual interest in the thing and actually physiologically wanting the thing, right? You mm-hmm. want the cookie, yes, yes. But the because you know that's like physiologically, you know, you're, you're salivating over it. But intellectually, you know, it's not a good idea. But I think this is less common in the Oankali's environment, so it's not something they're good at empathizing with in the humans. Um, and I think they interpret a physiological ability or interest in the humans as being something that would be consistent with their intellectual interest right so so if if someone feels if someone biologically is like you know ready to bear children or biologically is interested in 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 sexual simulation or whatever they interpret that as being synonymous with agreement at the intellectual level because they have less of that disjoint okay do you see where i'm coming from there sort of yes Hmm. The only problem is that with this whole 
notion is the the fact that we don't really know what Don Cali thing, right? Because the author oh, yeah, yeah. doesn't I mean, allow us to just... see because they're so alien in the book that way. So hmm. uh, that's yeah. So that's just kind of my interpretation of of how they're they're acting here. But it feels very consistent with everything that they've done so far. They have this, uh, and and it feels like they have this this. Uh, that that consistency, the fact that this is something that kind of matches everything that they've mm-hmm. done, it, it gives them a, a kind of a, a real um, complexity as the kind of um, and, and and they feel much more kind of real as the like antagonists in this this narrative because of their their, their kind of subtleties and their complexities. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it it it, um, it moral that 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 their way of perceiving it like that kind of morally justifies their actions. Absolutely, right? they, they need to be. Like aware of the fact that the humans have, you know, are oh, interested in making a conscious decision, not just uh, going along with their, their physiology. But it seems like the, uh, um, it seems like it might be an explanation for why they seem uh, a part of the reason for why they seem so alien. I see, I see, I see your point, and I, I think I sort of agree. I, I think the, the, the fact is that because of the complexity and complexity of the situation. Hmm. It still doesn't, though, um, excuse the the fact that Nikanj, throughout the whole book, right, when when things were like, do you remember the conversation? I think if it was after the Paul Titus situation that mm-hmm. um, Lilith and Nikanj had this moment where Nikanj was go undergo the metamorphosis, and I think mm-hmm. what happened was they had a discussion where a discussion about, you know, ask or talk to me when there's things that need to be, you know, like things like that take about my body, right? I think that's what it, it, she said, that they said, that, that is anything related to my body and come and ask mm-hmm. or have a conversation with me, right? Yeah, and yeah. Nikan said, and I think if, that's go- if I remember correctly, so I think when Nikan was talking about, uh, they were coming to conversation, right? Nikan and mm-hmm. Lilith came to sort of agreement, let's say, uh, or there was at least some mm-hmm. understanding that Nikanj will speak or at least talk about it with about, about this. And this is a situation where you really need to have a conversation about this whole yeah. Um, yeah. decision, right? Like the, the whole, you know, making Lilith pregnant. So I don't know. I agree. Yeah. I mean, but, so, but the um, part of the reason why I think my kind of little hypothesis there makes a good explanation is because it feels like a, a kind of cognitive bias that the Oan Kali have about not thinking about this this disjoint, which is something that, like, just being aware that you have a, a bias in the way that you think is usually insufficient to stop you from falling prey to it. Yes. Right? Uh, so the, 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 the fact that Lilith has explicitly said, you need to talk to me about this, and, and so on, is, is, is not uh, adequate. For for to dissuade Nakanj from from doing this, even if it's kind of uh, well intentioned, I think it's just not it, it's not like internalized this idea that 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 this kind of like physiological willingness to do a thing and her intellectual willingness to do a thing are different. Yes, things. yes, I think that's the big <laughs> big um problem in here, and I and I think this whole issue. Is uh, it's a lot of things, right? This in this whole book have been about lack of conversation and lack of the and with this, as you described, cognitive bias from Don Cali. Um, hmm. But yeah, I agree in here. I, yeah, I, I understand just... your point now in a way, and uh, um, and I think I agree in, with it. Um, although, as I say, this whole book has been driving me nuts with the fact that a lot of things <laughs> could have been solved if there was enough transparency between them yeah i mean it's a, that's that's actually it's an interesting point because it's often a it's often a, a thing in kind of bad writing where there's a, a you know there's just a, a failure to communicate that leads to you know you see it in a lot of like bad comedy plots and stuff right you know if, if somebody had sat down and <laughs> yeah, talked for five yeah. minutes then this would have been like you could have avoided this entire thing um but then but it I would make slightly more comedy movie <laughs> yeah yeah but this, 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 like the fact that it's two alien species who are in a very asymmetrical power relationship to one another, kind of lends credence to the fact that there would be miscommunication mm-hmm. because, like, there's no, like, there's no strong motivation for the for the Owen Kali to actually, like, pay attention to what the humans want to communicate because they're the ones in control, and they're very alien to one another. So, and like, yeah. 
that's going to foster miscommunications. Yeah. And the fact is that the Onkali saved the remaining humans from the total mm. extinction also sort of puts into perspective, yeah, we, we've saved your ass. Yeah, it probably gives them a certain sense of ownership. Yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah it's it's a bit of a... Interesting. I say I would say it's a it's a very imbalanced position and and I don't know what's I mean like it's this story to be honest like I don't know where the next two books are gonna go but it just feels to me there's got it's it's a lot of um it's a lot of situations that small situations like that are what's going what will cause the conflict to escalate more and more even if two sides mm. will try to de-escalate the pro- the issues right okay. It's just this, this this lack of mm. communication, the attitude and changes of the environment that that's mm. yeah, the the failures of communication definitely seem to be a causal yeah. <laughs> in many of these no, uh, no, no, it's, conflicts. It's not like mm. you know it's a, a profound. Um, uh, we came to a profound conclusion, right? It's just um, <laughs> in a lot of these situations, mm. like um, it's. In, 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 I imagine this situation as being like a two foreign people meet that they cannot speak any of the common languages, right? And they try mm-hmm. to do something, let's say something complicated as an experiment, right? Cambridge experiment. They may mm-hmm. or may not have the knowledge how to do it, and they have to do something to communicate with one another, right? And it's mm-hmm. in a very simplistic yeah, it's way, a- it just shows that like the lack of ability to communicate and doesn't mean that you cannot speak to each other it's just the lack of mm. ability to actually understand one another is and it it, it it like when you have that kind of barrier to communication it it uh it, you're sort of prevented from heading off misunderstandings before they develop yes. into something more profound right like it's a, you, you can't kind of catch the the error early and fix it right it, it tends to it tends to uh, to grow yeah and <laughs> it, the book has shown this many many times humans in the mm-hmm. cage lilith and uh paul titus lilith and mm-hmm. joseph and kurt um lilith's pregnancy right um lilith and kaguya the attitude of kaguya right to, towards lilith all mm-hmm. this time the whole journey has been riddled with, you know, obviously in any in circumstances like this, right, there's bound to be things that are bumpy, right? But if mm-hmm. there was, but it's also very cliche, I would say, right, that like miscommunication, mm-hmm. right? Um, in yeah. many, I mean, it's, like, it, it's cliche for a reason, though, right? It's everywhere. Oh yes, 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 like, yes. Uh, uh, but like yeah. in a lot of movies that introduced aliens right and aliens come to the planet and they there's a they do something they sound something but there's this this miscommunication because of the alienness right but like and Mm. often there were more not or not like this whole situation could have been solved and make the movie very boring uh, (laughs) if you know (laughs) if the odd one aside on another didn't try to trick uh, you know, like uh, humans trying to steal technology or the aliens trying to do something to humans, blah, blah, blah. You know, like this is very cliche, mm-hmm. right? And very generalistic view. But it sort of mm-hmm. happens in here as well, in a way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it applies in, in you know, many situations in just day-to-day life, oh, yeah. right? The, the failure to actually just sort of drill down on, on um, the specifics of, of the nature of your your disagreement and like the, the kind of unwillingness to, to entertain one another's positions for long enough to actually understand the nature of your disagreement and and uh, discuss it. Yeah, what's yeah, that's yeah the, very yes, common. Absolutely, I, I especially in political discourse. Mm, yes, uh, although I personally want to stay away from that because that's just another kind of warrants. But yeah, this this is the reason. <laughs> um, a lot of issues arise from that. Yes, mm, yeah. and there are plenty of techniques for for doing it better, right? It's just the. I think though techniques exist, it's the willingness of actually wanting to apply those techniques, Richard. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, thing, you know. Like yeah, some control. people just yeah. thrive, and in politics, people thrive on the conflict, even if it doesn't matter whether or not it's positive or negative. People are talking as long as people are talking about you, you're good, right? Hmm. So, yep. I say if you. Uh, I'll, uh, in in my tradition of plugging books, I'll plug a good Go book on. here. Um, How to have impossible conversations, I think, is the title by um, Peter Bogosian and James Lindsay. That's an excellent one on the subject. Okay, okay, I need to check it out then. Yeah, 
and uh if you ever want to see someone who's managed to to kind of uh, i i think i often describe him as kind of a, a savant of the content of that book i don't think he's a, i don't know if he's read it i don't know if he's familiar with any of the theory in it but he's amazingly good at doing it in real life um this is a, a, a american uh, jazz musician called uh, daryl davis mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a long documentary. Actually, it's not actually that long. It's a documentary. It's a great documentary. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, called Accidental Courtesy about okay. him. Um, and the fact that he, uh, has managed to persuade like, at this point, I think over a hundred people to leave the Ku Klux Klan. Ah, okay. Basically just by sitting down and talking to him. Okay. I see. I rem- uh, I, I didn't, I don't have, <laughs> I don't remember names, but that story, I know what you're, who you're talking about. Yes. Yes. I've, I've heard of this fella. Yeah. Yeah. So like if, if you want to kind of uh, learn how to like exemplify the, the skills of how to have uh, very difficult conversations and, and come to, to a point of common understanding across broad divides, then those two pieces of source material are uh, a good start. Yeah, point. it's absolutely the story of the man, especially the Ku Klux Klan, uh, Ku Klux Klan uh, members and how he managed to have a conversation, befriend them. It's incredible. Like... So I, I yes, it proves the point. A proper conversation and willingness to uh, deep dive uh, di- into those problems really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, 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 the, the, one of the key things that come from it is just curiosity, yeah. right? So his his primary motivation for for talking to people in the clan was like he's, he's black, so it was like how how can people hate me for the color of my skin without having ever met me? Yeah, uh, he just he didn't get that. So like, he, that that was what motivated him to talk to them, just to be like, uh, how how are you able to come to a position of hating me without having met me because of something as arbitrary as my skin color? Uh, and then you know that from there, the uh, he persuaded them of the the, the like the the error of their ways, effectively, but out of that honest curiosity. That's kind of the like the 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 way to approach a conversation with someone with whom you disagree profoundly is honest curiosity about why they think what they think just on the topic of kkk just really slight off tangent i just need to i remembered because i was reading about this topic and i need to say Mm -hmm. for those who are in who would who will check that black fella and his story about kkk do check also the names that um uh the kkk members use the titles for each rank, <laughs> I swear it's ma. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah, their titles are just bizarre. I have no idea how that's a thing. I but. honestly, it's like it's whoever started this and came up with the ideas of those names. Either was a massive nerd and <laughs> and had great imagination naming wise, but it's a hell. It's hilarious. Honestly, it's. Oh. It's just so strange. It's it's, yeah. it's fantastic. I honestly, when you read them, I I cry every time out of laughter when I go into this topic. And it's it's the juxtaposition though of like the the kind of like horrendous political honestly, position with the ridiculous yeah, names. That's just it's like, like what the, hell? the moment you hear that and the moment you po- connect those two yeah. points, it's just like it's scary how the things they've done. But holy shit, they were funny yeah. as fuck when it comes to the naming of each other. It's just. I just don't know. I just imagine yeah. the meeting, right? And they're like throwing, you know, slurs and they're like how racist they are. And then there's like, you know, the Grand Wizard is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sorry. It's just, I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, it, it's just weird. But yeah, moving, <laughs> moving on, on from, from that. From, from that. <laughs> so I just needed to mention that because it's so funny. Mm. Okay. So uh, returning to, 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 to Lilith's. Um, uh, Lilith's child. Yeah, so we, we get a little bit more information about about um, what this child will be. We like, right? So we learn it's a yes, daughter. Yes, yes. And the book goes then saying that well, Nikan says that the child will look like Lilith and Joseph, but the differences will be hidden until the metamorphosis. So the child will undergo certain metamorphosis by we don't know yet of as of what exactly that consists of, right? Because we know in the Nikan's part it was the sensory arm coming out. Hmm. Nobody, we don't know yet what the human's gonna like. Maybe the tentacles, maybe the hair will be looking like more like tentacle-like. Who knows? 
But the Kanch says that yeah. this, our children will be better than either of us. We will moderate your hierarchical problems and you will lessen our physical limitations. Our children won't destroy themselves in a war. And if they need to regrow a limb or to change themselves in some other way, they'll be able to do it and there'll be other benefits. But they won't be human, Liv mm. said. That's what matters. You can't understand, but that is what matters. It's tentacles noted. The child inside inside you matters. It released her arms and her hands clutched uselessly at one another. This will destroy us, she whispered. My God, no wonder you wouldn't let me leave with the others. You will leave when I do. You, Ahajaz and uh, Chan and our children. We have work to do here before we leave. It stood up. We'll go home now. Ahajaz and Dichan are waiting for us. Hmm. So I think it's interesting because it relates back to what... I don't remember who was it. Chitaya? Kaguya? Maybe it was Nikanj. About the problem. I, I think it was Chitaya in the very first chapter or two, first few chapters on the part one when they were talking about... Mm-hmm. Um, the differences between the Onkali and the humans, right? That they were like humans are very mm-hmm. hierarchical and the that they have like we have very contradicting traits that we are very social but very hierarchical and authoritarian and that causes issues, blah 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 and stuff like that. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly mm-hmm. remember, but there was something like this. Yeah, so we, we have difficulty solving certain collective action problems as was illustrated <laughs> quite nicely by the conflicts that immediately arose yep. in this book. Yep. When the humans were left in a, to their own devices, yeah, so um, that's that. This is interesting, uh, but I'm more interested mm-hmm. about the physical limitations, right? Like that, the child, you know, they won't destroy themselves, but they can grow a limb or change themselves in one way or another, right? That's that's, and there will be other benefits. So, like, I guess the mm-hmm. memory. Um, I guess maybe the strength. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the the Onkali have been flying around the galaxy, accumulating all of these very uh, interesting biological traits right they they seem to be very capable um like they they say they're physical limitations but like then in many ways by comparison with humans they're not physically mm-hmm. limited i think it's just like a, a, an expansion of their, their yes. physical capacities i wonder uh, if also breathing underwater because i think you know yeah. onkali can breathe underwater but i mm. think though i think because the chapter before i continue with my thoughts this is where the chapter ends right lilith pondering on what she should do resisting or going with nikanj but ultimately she decides that she needs more information because there is if there's a chance to learn how to slip down kali and have pure children she needs to learn it right so this that's where the chapter sort of ends um but the thing is Imagine the situation where the awesome humans that slipped under the Onkali radar and they have produced pure children, right? There's we have you're talking about several generations of humans, right? And we have several generations of the children of the Onkali human children who have a moderated their like who in, in which the Onkali have moderated that sort of hierarchical problems, meaning also that they are less prone to aggressiveness i guess because it says they'll be less and they'll be uh they won't destroy themselves in the war but mm-hmm. if the pure humans then would attack those um onkali children right like you no know, the human onkali hybrids what would then happen right would the onkali protect them the human onkali protect themselves or like the onkali having those um uh, poisonous glands or you know or would they just be pacified mm. right yeah yeah i think it's, it's one of those things where like tr- trying to fight back against the owen carly it seems like a a losing proposition and i think we've kind of talked about this before like unless you have like a full technological civilization behind you because even if you you know win in a few skirmishes right they're pretty relentless yes. like they're you're not going to kind of uh, you know outweigh them. Absolutely, <laughs> they've been around for forever, uh, and you know, they'll just sit they're, they're patient. You know, they'll they'll slowly uh, integrate you. It's it's really uh, like I, I don't see a, a, a any kind of uh, near term success in that regard. Like I mean, maybe you slip under their radar long enough that, that enough of them have moved on to some other planet that you can kind of maintain your own enclave um, with enough power to kind of hold off like the local contingent to stop them from integrating you. But they're always going to be kind of, you know, 
outside the walls waiting. Yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I just yeah, it feels to me it's it's a, it's a difficult um it's a difficult situation and uh, I feel like for it's not really a situation you can solve, is it? Like Im- imagine the situation where there is an enclave as you said of pure humans and then there's an enclave of the human on Kali hybrids, right? If given the situation that both can survive and li- live alongside each other, mm. there would be a war eventually between the humans and the hybrids. That's just that's just well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it become it comes down to the point of kind of like uh, the Owen Carly don't seem particularly interested in like you know they, they wouldn't kind of wipe out. I, I don't think they'd be. They wouldn't. That wouldn't. It doesn't seem like their style to just sort of wipe out that kind of an enclave of people, right? They just kind of. They'd sit around outside it and try and like lure people out as a well, yes. almost, or uh, tempt people into to leaving. But at the same um, time, if given enough time and with enough motivation, I would say hmm. that humans eventually would start making bombs and trying to bomb the hell out of the hybrids and Don Kali. You know what I mean? Yeah, and at that at that point, the Don Kali would intervene, right? So it would be one of those kind of political standoff situations where like the humans avoid putting themselves in a position where they actually have the power to to do serious yeah. damage to the Oankali t- so that the Oankali will permit them to persist for long enough for them to, you know, to continue to mm-hmm. do their thing, right? If they ever become actually a threat, then the Oankali will come down yes. on them because you know, they won't tolerate uh, having a bunch of people, uh, a bunch of their own people killed. So, uh, yeah, it seems like a, uh, yeah, not, not a great long-term prospect, but like it, that's kind of like the, the best you can hope yes, for, absolutely. right? <laughs> But yeah, I guess that summarizes the chapter, no? Uh, yeah, I think that, that covers the, the chapter, right? I mean, they, they just kind of... Uh, uh, Lilith walks off after Nakanj into the, into the ship, and that's, that's the yeah. end of the, the end You of have the book. just one last note um, here written down. Can you... Uh... Yeah, so that's just the, the, the last little point I wanted to make about... Um, so there's a, a line towards the end there. So she considered resisting, making it drug her and carry her back. But that seemed a pointless gesture. And this sentence seems to be kind of a, a, a microcosm that encapsulates Lilith's attitude to the whole kind of this, you know, the situation of humanity in relation to the Neo and Carly here. Right? Her, she is very unhappy with the, this, this like, you know, idea that they will be assimilated, but she kind of feels that resistance is futile. At this point, yes, right? yes. Um, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, she retains a, a glimmer of hope that if uh, they can survive, then maybe they can eventually uh, you know, pull some humanity away from uh, from the Owen Kali. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, I just uh, I thought that was a, a nice sort of summing up of her, uh, you know, the, the whole way that yes. she's thought about her interaction with the Owen Kali throughout yeah. this book. No, honestly, I think, yeah, and I think that's that pretty much summarizes the, the whole situation. And that closes up to chapter nine the last chapter of book one dawn it was amazing i i think mm-hmm. it was an amazing journey and i'm looking forward to the uh the next books like it, it was a great journey and yeah it, it is the ending i didn't expect like honestly the whole pregnancy situation i was like oh wow okay mm. that it, it was great honestly i really enjoyed this Okay, well, that's good. Uh, I'm uh, glad you enjoyed the book. <laughs> Although it was <laughs> pain not to be able to read other chapters, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, dragging this process out of reading the book over the course of an entire year is kind of a, an unusual way of uh, reading a book. But uh, I guess so. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, 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 yeah, I, hopefully, I picked a worthwhile one. No, I think it was a great book, especially with the fast. Uh, the fact is that we wanted something that. Um, would talk about biology mm. that we can really apply our knowledge and expertise, right? And I think you hit it pretty well. I, I think it's a great book, especially with the first few chapters. We had quite a lot of nice conversations to talk, especially um, biology, and of course throughout the book later on. Some chapters were less descriptive on the what, and so it was mostly about the narrative and the story. But overall, I think mm. it was a great book. Oh yeah, yeah, and I mean, I think that's the one of the reasons that I picked it was both that it was. Um, you know, narratively compelling and, and well written, but also that it had all this kind of very interesting, kind of stimulating uh, content uh, for 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 us to go off on on tangents talking yes. about. Yes. Oh my god, this. <laughs> I mean, this. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how much um, we journeyed um, off tangent 
while we were talking about the book. Um, I have some stats later on. Mm. So I was just going to, yeah, I'll give a, a sort of brief uh, synopsis of the book just to kind of recap, uh, to go back over it, to, to, to kind of get a perspective on, on uh like the entirety of Lilith's journey through this, because it's quite a it's quite a story when you really think about what happens to her yes, as an individual, absolutely. right? Go so on. I mean, like when we first meet when we first meet her, she's you know in this this is in solitary mm-hmm. confinement, but she's already been through a lot when we meet her, right? She's only well, kind of twenty six. Um, like she has like twenty six years of memory, yes. right? But there's some weird time stuff going on. Right? Um, and you know, she had a, a four year old son, heir, and a husband who were both killed in a car crash. Mm-hmm. And, and and so that's a pretty uh, uh, major life event at the age of only twenty six. And she was she's back in college uh, studying for an anthropology degree. Uh, but then she's in a uh, briefly like the survivor of a, an all out nuclear exchange between the U.S. and the USSR. Right? She survived a nuclear mm. war, which and she survived it because she was hiking in Peru to Machu Picchu. Um, so you know she was uh, doing some interesting and uh, I think uh, stuff, that was uh, some, because some, to like after the whole events of her family, you know, her husband and son dying, she went on the mm-hmm. sort of journey to sort of I don't know rediscover herself, and she's she was where you know the whole situation happened and picked up by the aliens, which is really funny because yeah, a lot yeah. of um, people believe that pyramids anywhere in uh, Egypt or uh, you know Peru or whatever were built by aliens. <laughs> I didn't think about it's that. It's just like. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't think about that. That's a, that's a, good, that's a funny perspective <laughs> on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's like, she said some character building stuff occurred to her before yes. we meet her. Right. Uh, and then, you know, so she's picked up by these aliens in Peru uh, and is placed in suspended anima- animation inside a genetically engineered carnivorous plant for 250 mm-hmm. years uh, on a. A, a living interstellar capable vessel in orbit around the earth which you know weird scenario right? yes uh and then she's kept in solitary confinement for about two years with a couple of like across the course of a couple of awakenings from this suspended animation pod and then is like you know confined in a small room with a weird gray vaguely humanoid alien covered in tentacles Shia. Um, who she finds like you know viscerally unnerving, um, and this alien informs her that she had cancer. So, like uh, to add to the pile of uh, like crazy shit that's happened yes, in her life. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yep. Yep. And then, uh, you know, and not only that, but it's now cured. Um, good, I mm-hmm. suppose, right? But um, also that the aliens are interested in the cancer and, and other aspects of human biology because they're interested in using it in their cross-species genetic engineering project in which humans will have very little mm-hmm. say. Um, so, you know, that's a bombshell dropped onto her. Um, plus, uh, and, and you know, the, these aliens have been engaged in this like cross-species genetic engineering project with a bunch of other species in a history that dates back for literal billions of years from having left their home planet. Absolutely, and then the fact uh, is which... that in the, those 250 years that Lilith was confined as well, the uh, aliens that basically were keeping her in the confinement were modifying the planet, um, trying to make the species more resistant to um, that nuclear radiation that was the remainings of the nuclear war. Yeah, uh, uh, sort of you know, restoring the planet while while she's been asleep, and then um, yeah, and, and the, the other sort of interesting aspect of these aliens is is they all sort of kind of remember that entire billion long year history vaguely through this kind of weird genetic yeah. memory thing. So there's there's that as well. <laughs> They're going to have very alien cognition. Um, so and, and she's told that she will be leading a group of humans back to Earth and teaching them, uh, kind of acting as a, like a parent to this group, uh, supervising them, uh, whether she likes it or mm-hmm. not. Pretty much, um, although she does, she's offered the choice by Steyer of kind of having a, a swift death if she can't. Uh, she's sort of unwilling to to take part in this this project uh, and, and you know helping the humans to get back to Earth. Um, she you know, declines it's, that option because I uh, remember she, that you know back when it was the very beginning when like the situation you know when Chitaya sort of is introduced a very um, 
um, caring, I would say, of her. Like the fact that, you know, eventually she touches him and we the, the interaction is before we meet, you know, everyone else. Um, hmm. Jitaya was like sort of the basis of like her support and he, he was the only one that sort of got her in a way. Is like, it's just the fact that, you know, this will be tough responsibility thrown at her and it, it, he was the only one that was like i can do this here right here and now i'm gonna want to only offer it once to you and it's up to you mm. yeah so that's, that's an interesting point actually because we talked before about nikanj being kind of the one who might perhaps have the most um accurate view of the humans but this um like offering this choice to her by Shdaya seems like a, a fairly uh, a deep insight into the humans yes, as well. I, I think uh, I think that throughout the whole situation, right, throughout the whole book, although we little knew, knew about Shdaya as is, right, I feel like I don't remember if Shdaya was involved in the whole Paul Titus situation. I think it was Kaguya um, leading this whole situation, right? I think mostly. I, I don't. I, I imagine Shdaya was probably involved in the decision but just didn't kind of strongly descend i guess so way. but i think Chitaya had i had this feeling that had the most um deep the deepest understanding of what um would happen right and what the choices would be the best choices for would be right yeah what, what the kind of the, the weight of the choices that, that yes Earth would have to to, to, yes. to make going forward like the, the 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 sort of magnitude of the burden that it was being placed on her um and yeah i i don't i'm, I'm not sure if Steyer had has done this before i don't know if it it knows um kind of from what i remember you know, if, if it's put other humans if you in remember the from the book is that um Steyer was actually he uh, he grew with a human right a doctor a human doctor. Oh yes, a yes. lady who mm -hmm. died of an old age eventually. But um, she taught mm -hmm. them about humans. So maybe the fact that you no, know, Daya had that sort of much longer uh, uh, mm -hmm. like a relationship yeah. with humans. So that that's why you know, although Nikanj understood like the whole situation about the Paul Titus and that the Lilith will not like this and this whole situation arise. Mm -hmm. Um, later on as Nikanj grows up. It sort of does the same thing as Kaguya I noticed, but please continue with the yeah, summary. Yeah. Yes, I noticed that, and I just wanted. Mm. I felt like it'd be a good point to mention. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's a good point. Actually, I think it also might be just um, kind of a uh, um, like Daya has more mm -hmm. maturity than the Count, right? It's, it's yes. older, um, and uh, and this because uh, Liths is actually the first cohort of humans, so it's not done it explicitly before in this uh -huh. context. But perhaps it's kind of more aware of the um, when this has happened in the past, when they've integrated other species, like the whatever the burden is that they place on the uh, individuals whom they they use in the way that mm -hmm. they use Lilith, uh, and perhaps it's just kind of more um, more aware of, of what that uh, what that means for someone who's in yes. Lilith's position than than the Kanj might. But um, yes, moving on from that point. Uh, so she she lives with Shdaya's family for a little while and tries to learn their language and and is, uh, ends up helping Nikanj, their child, pass through this this sort of metamorphosis into its adult stage, and and is given the chance to to interact with another human, another adult human, for the first time in in years, uh, um, which uh, does not end well at all. Right, he tries and fails to rape her, but succeeds in injuring her and, and knocking her unconscious. So she has you know. Her one interaction with another human is yeah. Is I mean, terrible. it was a child in a man's body, right? It it ne he yeah, never learned yeah. what proper human interaction meant, right? So yep, and, uh, so in a very uh, uh, unpleasant yes. interaction with another human, which I think I don't know feels almost engineered to to uh, help her be um have feel more affinity for yes. the uh, actually um uh, before we continue with the summary i do remember the um japanese fella she heard of um yes in the meantime i think she she like sought she caught, caught a yes. glimpse of him uh, uh, um, uh, no, not a it was a story of uh he, she heard name of a human just before of paul titus situation she was looking for another human ah, yes. and um hmm. the reason why i remember this is because one the 
um, that those pods that they use was used to moving around. Uh, we I remember we were talking mm-hmm. about anti gravity or like you know superconductivity, and in the end we realized that the book described it as basically organism that's snails, snails basically yeah that were like producing <laughs> slime and then sucking it up at the back so that was that was that mm. but also because of the orange peels in the different place yeah, that were basically yeah. she buried them and then kaguya just jumped on her i'd be like you know uh, i think it was about the poisoning of the onkali conversation and then there's like not not many people mm. things can poison us and then when she planted uh, when she buried the uh, orange peels in that different area um it just produced this massive tumor um uh, right and mm-hmm. it's just uh, yeah, yeah so like it's that. like and then kaguya goes to her oh you know you finally found a way to poison us like oh wow okay asshole <laughs> yeah we gotta get in a, a few last <laughs> 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 It's absolutely, absolutely <laughs> not my intention to call an Akagaya and ask because he was one, but it's not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. So, uh, and and she's she's eventually persuaded um, by Nikan to to let it alter her um, so that she can learn uh, their mm-hmm. language faster, and also so that it can sort of complete its its um, like rite of passage mm-hmm. into adulthood by by altering her successfully. And I think that latter part is kind of the main reason why she uh, permits yes. it to do that. So that, um, she she kind of forms an attachment to it, um, and she you know, eventually, because of the the modifications from the Kanj, gains enhanced strength and memory, and the ability to heal more rapidly, as well as possibly some sort of basic chemical signaling mm-hmm. abilities in order to interface with their doors and mm-hmm. their tech and stuff. And also uh, an, an increased lifespan, which will, um, if um, in, um, unencumbered by violent events, uh, exceed by a significant margin 130 years. Wow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, she gets kind of a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of buffs basically. in this. Uh, um, OP, yeah. mod- OP buffs that basically she's cheating now. <laughs> no, and, and sort of through this process, she, she bonds with Nakanj and, and its mates, and and kind of uh, we get a little bit of a time skip here where she's kind of spending time with them um, and uh, you know, learning to kind of get some pleasure from their interactions and, and also spending time um, in this jungle training environment so that she can uh, have the, the skills to, to teach the, the humans once they've mm-hmm. been awoken. Um, so... Um, uh, you know, and the next part of the book, she's placed in this room uh, and told that she has to awaken 40 people from a choice of 80, uh, and she has all their dossiers. So she's kind of you know, burdened yes. with this responsibility of choice. Right? She has to she has to pick which people she thinks will <laughs> from, like be least likely to end up killing one another, I think, yeah. is kind of the uh, the way she's ending up having um, to think about this. Just before you continue, like I just want to point out the... No- um the scene before she goes into that massive room about the observatory uh when she goes on that massive oh, yes. fart bubble up into the observatory and then um mm-hmm. can see the earth through the lens um i just imagine it yeah i think it's, it's the whole earth moon yes. system right i think she can see both the moon and yeah, yeah. it's it just felt like i think that scene like I, when i imagine it being in her you know shoes and be like you know, seeing the planet and you know, our planet and the moon, and be like thinking, "Damn, that there's nothing left in there." It's just like beautiful, and yet, because when you see the beautiful images of the planet, you know, from space, it must have been incredible sight, but at the same time, absolutely horrifying. Yeah, I mean, like the thinking about the the image, like Earthrise and, and the others. I mean, I, my, the hairs on my body will stand yeah. up anyway. <laughs> I just just remembering how that kind of looks. So seeing it in person, man, it'll be beautiful, uh, and yet, yeah, it gives you a kind of uh, uh, sense of mm-hmm. profundity, uh, and the, and I think that that's what one of the things that kind of is 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 um, sort of finally emotionally persuasive to her that she is like on mm-hmm. a ship. Yes, um, that kind of that, that sort of really sinks home the the message that. That Leo and Carly are and kind of in power over the Earth yes, system, absolutely. Um, and yes. Yeah, so having um, having awoken the the required number of people from from the list, 
uh, she forms a, a relationship. I was going to say kind of a romantic relationship, but that doesn't like the, the circumstances were not really conducive to a romantic relationship. So I went with the more biological term of pair bond. She, she pair bonded I guess with it one was of the more humans. Like a physical uh, sort of understanding as well, relationship. You know, like it. Um, but I mean, there was definitely a, uh, a kind of a fairly strong, um, like emotional support yes, absolutely, absolutely. aspect to their yeah. relationship. Yeah. As I said, it was there was understanding so, yeah. and there was like sort of support, emotional support to each other um, involved in that mm. relationship. Yes, and, and uh, Nakanj interferes in the sexual component of that relationship, literally inserting itself between the two of them uh, and connecting up their nervous systems so that it can sort of simulate them uh, having a sexual experience and experience that itself and permit them to experience one another's sensations. Um, bottled, if you could bottle so, that drug, you could really sell it on the planet. You could be the richest man on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have this kind of uh, uh, like a very pleasurable experience, but uh, it also is not really at all consenting on, on Joseph's yeah. part. Uh, and that you know, seriously weirds him out and leaves him feeling very violated. And Lilith is not happy about the fact that that was the way it went down mm. with Nakanj mm. either. Um, so, uh, you know, whilst that kind of uh, uh, relationship is going on, um, we have the tensions in the group building in in the way that Lilith entirely predicted they would. Right, the the conflicts that would arise between these humans. You know, they're 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 pairing off, and the pairing off doesn't go entirely as everyone would like. So, I mean, some, some people an didn't want rape. to pair off. So, you know, like. And exactly. that she was like, yep. everybody's pairing off, so you have to do it. It's just basically childish and sorry, but no. Mm. Like, you know, I know it may leave you frustrated, but that's the that's the way it is. Yep. Um, which, you know, Lilith was fully anticipating that there would be conflict. Uh, and, uh, you know, she does what she can to kind of keep the peace in the, the, the mess. Because there's, um, there's all these humans stuck in a room with no real purpose and nothing in particular to do. So... That's gonna foment and that's conflict. What, um, and uh, sorry, all... that was where also mm -hmm. when those idiots, when uh, after the fight, they also sent that uh, guy Derek, I think, into that uh, food chamber just to see if uh, if you know if he emerges successful, conquering the whole alien ship or whatever, figuring it out, and then letting them free. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that, that doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> Uh, and this all kind of culminates with them being drugged by the Uloi and given the same kind of uh, weird um, sex simulation thing that Lilith and Joseph <clears throat> that Lilith and Joseph got it's... from the Kanj, uh, but in a much more yeah, drugged I mean, up state. To be honest, like this is such a weird thing when you think about it now, from this press when you're as you're summarizing yeah. this, because like it's. Uh... The all I the the one Kali come in and to interfere with the whole situation because it's starting to escalate, and you have <laughs> you have basically the one Kali dragging you up and then giving you the best sex experience you could ever imagine in your life, right? Imagine you have at best sex and then multiply by a thousand potentially. So it, it feels very um very brave new world. Um, it's very like um. You know, the the drug in that book soma you know it's kind of the, the it's some kind of you know awesome drug that that has all the all the mm -hmm. cool effects right and none of the downsides and everyone's always having you know massive orgies that's the that's kind of the like the the way that population is like controlled and lulled into kind of a, a, a sense of uh, security yeah. and yeah well not even i mean they they just kind of uh stagnant as a society right they they just um, almost unconscious in in their uh, kind of immediate pleasures without any uh, larger goal it's kind of the sort of the 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 aspect of that book that makes mm -hmm. it dystopian is the it's the sort of the, the temptation of the amusing ourselves to death rather than actually um uh, you know, achieving something that with with more um uh I don't know, more lofty yeah, yeah goals. absolutely no absolutely <laughs> No, it has that kind of same feel of uh, uh, lulling individuals into a kind of unconscious pleasure to to keep them placated. Um, so yeah, in in this, uh, and after having been subjected to that um, weirdness, they they're moved to a jungle, and 
expected to uh, you know, try and learn how to survive yes. there. <clears throat> uh, and uh, and uh, shortly after that, uh, Joseph is is killed by Kurt. Um, and in you know a, a dramatically ironic moment, uh, it, it seems to be because he w- was able to heal more rapidly and was healing a minor injury uh, that Kurt saw. Uh, that caused Kurt to just sort of uh, question his his humanity and, and uh, go berserk and, mm-hmm. and, and kill him. Uh, so, and uh, the Nikanj and Lilith, uh, in in trying to to protect Joseph from the possibility he might come to harm from one of the other humans for his association with them, uh, ended up indirectly being responsible for his demise which is pretty uh, devastating for Lilith pretty ironic and then yep uh, and then sort of shunned by the the rest of the human population Lilith is is you know, left behind on this ship for her own protection from from these humans that she uh, she awoke and is informed that she is now pregnant with a child that is genetically mixed by Nikanj from from Lilith and and Joseph's stored sperm and the from some genetic material from Nikanj's mates Ahajus and Dishan. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much hmm. the end of the book. Uh, so when summarized in kind of short form like that, it's it, there's, there's like a whole bunch of really crazy crap <laughs> yes. stuff just happened in this book, right? It's it's a really uh, a very bizarre story. Um, in in the the broad swipes uh, broad broad strokes of, of mm-hmm. its summary um but it's 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 fascinating because it you know it sounds like nuts in that format but when you read through it it remains very like it it feels very kind of grounded very um yes. uh, very real as you're reading through it it do, like the the kind of absurdity and the bizarreness of the situation are you're kind of aware of them but they 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 don't intrude on your uh like sense of enjoyment of reading the book in at least in my experience anyway uh, i think it was i think it was did, great like, i mean honestly the summary of the, hmm. the book when you think about it and as you were describing i remember all those random scenes and situations right um hmm. uh, for example i just remember the situation with the kids the onkali kids that you know like um when lilith you know was um uh, going to meet the little kids, you know, like, you remember when my prediction mm. was, oh, she's gonna meet the kids and kids are going to say something strange to her, that's something they shouldn't have said, that the adults are trying to keep from her mm. or something, and uh, yeah. and all of that situation, it, the, the book was crazy, the, 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 the twists and turns, the, the, the storyline, amazing, unpredictable. Mm. Yeah, I think that uh, the tension is maintained quite well throughout the book, um, despite the fact that, I mean, like, oftentimes in the book, we're kind of very much foreshadowed about what is going to happen. And, you know, Lilith is constantly saying to the old girl in some way or another, like, this is yes, not going to end yes. well, right? You do realize that if you put me in this situation, like, some, something is not going to go right. But, you know, they always seem to ignore her. Um, and but the the tension is kind of retained in like what new weirdness are the Owen Carly going to come up with because there's always something new and weird right uh, and also uh, like exactly how is the is is Lilith's prediction of doom going to come, yes, exactly. come to pass right the specifics exactly. of that um, but so it's uh, to be fair to give mm. Lilith credit she is tough like. Mm. Oh yeah. Honestly, I man, not many people would be able to hold on and keep going after what, especially after what Lilith experienced. I mean, two years in solitary. I mean, come on, like that's in that's yeah. it itself is a hell of a problem, right? Like, yeah, that's enough to like permanently mentally damage yeah. most people. Like the, uh, the fact you know, like yeah. even in prisons, people like in prisoners need contact with other people because otherwise they go crazy right and, and mm-hmm. here we are she's still there maybe yep yeah uh, i mean she's uh, she's a, a really interesting prota- protagonist in many ways because uh, she's she's smart she's capable and uh, she's kind of stoic mm-hmm. about the situation and you know she the like she knows when she's being manipulated and like, she can see it. she's kind of uh, she's very aware of the situation she's in uh she has a lot of that kind of self-awareness but uh, she's just in this uh, like she's so constrained 
by that situation that she you know, she doesn't really have much choice in what she's going to do right she, she, the, the only real choice that she has there is that, you know, am i going to just say no i'm not going to participate in this in at all i'm going to you know die mm-hmm. basically or am i going to you know p- play along with this role that you you have planned out for me um and you know she uh, uh, she continuously acts uh, in a kind of in a well-intentioned way, right? She's always trying to do kind of whatever is going to be best for the remaining humans, Absolutely. right? She's she's acting kind of um, in in their in their interest. Uh, I mean, as long as you consider like the the goal of retaining some some degree of human independence from the own Kali, a valid one, which I think is uh, uh, you know we could have a whole kind of moral philosophy debate about that one, but like uh, it's a uh, I, th- I think a, a perfectly reasonable no, goal. Yeah. <laughs> to I, I think, to, considering yeah. the situation, she did a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, I can't really see how she could have done much better. To be I honest, I don't think uh, many people um, would be able to do better. Um, I don't yeah. know. I honestly, feel like even as as we often talked about this, putting ourselves in that position from you know safety from our homes. I don't think, even though, you know, as much as brave we can be and how much uh, applying, you know, our scientific knowledge and approach, I still think we would be very, um, I personally would not be as stoic as her. Let's put it this way. So Yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, it, she demonstrates a pretty extraordinary strength of character to, to bear up under these circumstances. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. As I, I, I mean, I... I <laughs> I certainly wouldn't have wanted the role that they gave her. Right? No, <laughs> I might have. I might have been content to hang around on the Owen Carly ship and learn about their, you know, how they do stuff. But um, yeah, having to um, <laughs> having to try and get these humans to go back to Earth and in, in no, uh, yeah, no, no, no. After uh, knowing, like, like, after knowing, I knew that something like you know stuff like this would happen. Like, and predictions are pretty obvious that I that you know the conflict and stuff like that. And knowing humans. I would not want that job. Mm. Like, let me play around with your technology. Let me play around, you know, you know, modify me as well, so I know what, you know. So, but I don't mm. want to deal with that. I want the benefits. I don't want the cons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's uh, and you know, the, the I think that it does exhibit um, a reasonable, uh, reasonable depth of knowledge of the humans that they've kind of. Um, studied that they picked Lilith because it is clear that just uh, like uh, her character uh, is is kind of what suits her so well to this so she does she doesn't want to to be in Absolutely. this position of responsibility but she's she has the sort of right attributes to be capable of it and the um i mean uh, i think part of it is also just her kind of she she's not particularly um you know, she doesn't want power over people and she's not going to, she's not very judgmental of them Right. She she just kind of wants them to you know uh, get on. Right. Uh, there's a section in that in the last chapter where um, uh, I think she's she's thinking about Tate and she can she can just she can't really muster hate uh, any real bit- bitterness towards her. I think is the word. She can't muster um, any hate to Tate. Is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which you know. Uh, I think uh, you know, a, a lesser person might well <laughs> feel considerable I'll hate. hate every single uh, one of them. Uh, I, I'll be honest now. I'll generally in her <laughs> position, I'll be like, "Yeah, Nick, and you're right," because I would slaughter every one of them. Yeah, not being um, just sort of uh, generally disillusioned with humanity Pretty as a much. whole <laughs> <laughs> after having gone, yeah, is uh, uh, an accomplishment in in her <laughs> shoes. So uh, well done to yeah. Ten out of ten, <laughs> best leader. Hmm. No, I mean the book was great and yeah. it really touched on a lot of topics that both light and heavy. I would say that the really a lot of themes and situations that you can relate to um, modern world. I would say. Yeah, I, and there's, there's a lot of topic. I mean, there's a lot of stuff about about sexuality and gender roles and, and coercion in relationship to those things and, and biological determinism and all all of these these topics that are um, handled in this book with with um, a, a concreteness and, and coherence and clarity and, and they're just uh, explored with, with real kind of depth and sophistication. Uh, and, and, and maturity the, the conversation around their subjects in, in the current um, uh, milieu is, is often lacking mm. I think it was a great choice of book and we had so many topics so many conversations a lot of stuff 
Um, if I may, can I uh, give us a bit of summary of what we've talked about the the off tangent topics? Um, because I, I, <laughs> I mean, obviously we have to talk about this because I had to go through like different topics of the, each episode and I checked what topics we had, uh, we have talked about mm-hmm. and, um, and throughout the whole book, we reference, you know, science of modern world, right? We, we try to understand, right? Our, both our being a scientist and we touch topics about material design, biochemistry, biology, a bit of physical chemistry. History of life. We talked a lot about history of life. You know, sequencing and genomic uh, genome technologies. Um, even though it wasn't our expertise, we did touch about you know history of the world, especially USA at the time of the story, and of course as well the author's background and the culture. Uh, we did have an episode where we spent. A pretty long time talking about the safety of Internet of Things, the smart technology that is creeping in our lives. That was really funny because that was—I yep, yep. don't remember exactly which episode it was, but it was just like the whole references about where, like, about the technology and discussion about, like, you no know, invasion of um, of the smart items. Yeah, I think I think something that set me off in that direction was something to do with the way that the Owen Carly were watching. Yeah the the humans right i was like how is this surveillance yes, thing yes. working and then uh, who, who gets that uh, yeah, that was so a great <laughs> and we yeah we had time. a long <laughs> part in the conversation about this stuff um and then managed to indulge it more yes in the yes episode, except you know so. that that was a very <laughs> long episode where we could really have uh, open our wings about this whole topic that was that was great um mm-hmm. And uh, another thing worth mentioning in the stuff we discussed, I think, was uh, uh, nuclear war and the uh, the logic of that and all the new oh yes we yes that, 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 that's points. yes yes absolutely, <laughs> um, yeah we talked about a lot of stuff right you no know, just like looking at the chapter you know episode one of the chapter you know the very beginning right we've talked about a lot of um you know also like philosophy and stuff like that. Um, we mm-hmm. referenced yeah, yeah. a lot of animals, right? Trying to compare the, the abilities that Don Kali had to animals. We talked a lot about, about ants. That that's really a thing. There's like I've yeah, noticed the yeah. theme: the ants p- popped out quite a lot of time, you know, in this whole conversations. Well, I mean, ants, ants are worth talking about. Very <laughs> yeah, <ants. laughs> I mean, there's a good analogy Absolutely. between them and the Owen Kali, and and there's the whole uh, like the the nature of, of human cooperation and the analogy to you social insects and, yeah. and the rest of it. That's, but like alien wise, yeah. we you know like we talked about you know gastropods and mantis and like you know a lot of naked mole rats. You know because there was a conversation about cancer. You know <laughs> cancer like how they're resistant mm. to cancer. Yeah. Also, you social yeah. animals. Weirdly, we talked about like mm. you no. Know, human trials in history like you know we even touched like about nazi experiments stuff like that um uh, yeah, and just keep, um yeah. so yeah. i think we've done a pretty incredible job when it comes to like really going off tangent and still being able to uh reference <laughs> it back like it's it it was um yeah yeah that's uh, um uh, and uh, some some moral philosophy stuff uh, or moral psychology stuff, uh, cognitive psychology stuff, right? I mean, I, I, part part of the reason I, I picked this book was because uh, I thought it had a lot of, of, of psychological mm-hmm. realism in some aspects of it, and but also in in this kind of bizarre fantasy scenario. So it, it has a lot of nice jumping off points for for all these kind of interesting yes. discussions about the nature of of uh, uh, human psychology and society and, and technology. On and all the that. episode where we, when but, Lilith was modified with that memory, we had the whale of a time of, like talking about um, different types of memories and like t- uh, remembering stuff uh, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that, um, um, which mm-hmm. was uh, really, uh, I mean, in general, the book gave us opportunity to talk about so many things. And I think it was, uh, it was fantastic. Like, I absolutely love this. Uh, I really enjoyed this book and I hope everyone listening as well. I'm really thankful for Richard actually introducing this book to me because it is a really good book and one of the better ones I've read um, so far. Um, and I think, and I, I'm looking forward yeah, to the next I, ones because it's honestly, it's, it's been fantastic off tangenting, off tangent conversations hmm. uh, it's uh yeah I, I i think the the next couple have the potential to do uh similar stuff to uh, to this one uh in terms of the, the like uh, sheer source material for lots of Absolutely. different conversations um but uh, and, and i mean this uh, this book was pretty um 
unique to me because it it, uh, it was a real kind of breath of fresh air when I was reading and, and a bunch of sci-fi stuff. And you know, this one really kind of jumped out as just being like a a great sci-fi book, but but very unusual in various regards. And uh, yeah, I, I really uh, I really liked it when I read it, so I thought it would make a great um, great. Uh, Subject yeah, I think it was, it was uh, good because uh, uh, the reason why we started this podcast is because, as we mentioned in episode one, is that the fact that a lot of books get physics and chemistry pretty well, right? Especially physics because it's pretty well described. And for most of the time, if you don't understand mm-hmm. something nowadays, it's quantum. Like everything is quantum. Um, before that, I don't mm-hmm. know what would it be. I mean, it's a, the, the particular thing that I think that this got kind of right about mm-hmm. biology is like the extrapolation of the implications of increased biological technical yeah. capability right because you know you can take you can take physics and you can take chemistry and material science and that kind of stuff and you can sort of extrapolate forward quite yes, well absolutely. what that's going to look like and, i mean t- uh, say like the a tv show mm-hmm. like the expanse does a pretty cool job of uh taking some of those things and just going like project forward into the near future mm-hmm. of that technology but um, very rarely do they uh, do stuff like biology yes, super yes. well. Um, even in the show like The Expanse, like I, I'm thoroughly unconvinced that the anti rad medication is is, is remote. Yeah, that's. Support. I mean, like that's the thing. Like, it's, <laughs> right. there's a lot of yeah. um, places, games, movies, books that when they touch, trying to imagine how different life forms would be and how they would um, interact with each other and interact with us. Right, the biology is always a mm. bit off because how complex and difficult it is in spa- in, expe- in terms of trying to predict what where it's going to go next. Right, because the thing mm. is with mm. like physics, you know, it's it will keep going forward in a way it's easy to extrapolate, but like biology likes to go backwards sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a weird subject. There's all kinds of unexpected stuff. That always, yeah. There's always some kind of exception to the rule. Um, and it's uh, like the, the the implications are kind of much more um, much more mm-hmm. personal, right? They're they're much more about the 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 nature of our identity and humanity than um, the implications of um, the stuff that surrounds us, right? So it's kind of a, it's a little bit easier to extrapolate those things um, in our surroundings because we don't have to change ourselves and and the way that we think about our uh, identity and and the rest of it. Uh, in order to to put ourselves in those scenarios, but uh, when you think about the implications of biological mm-hmm. changes and biological technologies, it's it's kind of much yes. closer to home. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was the book mm-hmm. is great, and it sort of fills in the gap where we can talk about things that I don't know. It maybe people are not aware of yet that the technology is not as where they think would be now. Like. The news are scaring about us about like you know China, Russia developing super so- super soldiers. Not that easy. It's not that easy to uh, to mm. make you know super soldiers. Like e- yeah, uh, to to add a third um, book Go plug to this episode. Love it. I love those but <laughs> I said I wanted to say book plugs and I almost said butt plugs. Go on. <laughs> Go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay yeah um so uh, a, a book by jamie metzel called hack oh ah, yes i've heard of it yes um, yeah, yeah i think i, yes, I may yes. have mentioned it before at some point but that's a, a an excellent um kind of a summary of some of the current state of the art in, in the uh, genetic engineering technology and, and exploration of its mm-hmm. near future consequences i definitely yeah. i would everyone i would recommend uh, reading the books that Richard uh, always mentions, I have no memory of the names of the books and authors. I'm just absolutely crap when the memory stuff. I've read a lot of the books he saw, so he mentioned, but I never remember the title. So I would honestly recommend what um, what he says uh, to, to read. Um, um, they're really good books, and generally, I mean, I am enjoying Xenogenesis. I've never heard of it before. Uh, I think it's really it is. Underappreciated, I've actually, looked into like no. um, books about biology, looking for you know, searching using the search engines and trying to find. Xenogenesis, Xenogenesis is not really that often mentioned, which I'm really surprised by. Mm. Like this should be one of the sort of basic um, first. You know, it should, it should be in the top of lists of like about biology. Yeah, I mean, 
I think it's it's just kind of a search term association issue that's not kind of coming up because I mean I think it, it, if I remember correctly, it won like a Hugo and a Nebula, and you know Octavia Butler got a MacArthur Genius Grant, so it's not like you know it didn't get some yeah exactly appreciation, but it's just like it's just not that well kind of you don't hear about it much in people who yeah, talk about so sci-fi it's, classics. It's, it's, it's really uh, weird because uh, um, I mean I'm sure mm-hmm. there's a lot of hidden gems like this, but like. I mean, it's not that hidden. Mm. It did win prizes. It it was, yeah. you know. So I, I'm surprised. I, I haven't heard of it myself. And being avid sci-fi and fantasy reader, um, that I haven't heard of this book. So I'm really glad that I've, my, uh, you know, got to read this. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the trilogy because it's it's. It, I know it's going to be good. So we're running even longer yes. than we usually do this time. So and we're coming up on two hours. So we should probably talk about your predictions uh, for the next book. Yes, and, and just before we do, up. though, <laughs> I just had some statistics on the episodes we mm. had so far. So I've calculated the total number, of, mm. like the total uh, time it took us to record the books, uh, the episodes for each chapter, mm. all the chapters, except for this one, because this one's already running around two hours. So I suspect this is going to be the one, the longest episode we have for the whole series, um, except for the cyberpunk special episode. That was, you know, exception. I didn't count this one in. So we spent total of twenty-seven okay. hours, forty-eight minutes, and fifty-five seconds um, on the whole book, or, or up to the la- except for the last chapter, uh, which of most, excluding, excluding all of the tangents. <laughs> this is including all the tangents in there. <laughs> Um, <laughs> on average obviously the average will change now with the final episode but on average we spend an hour and 15 minutes on each episode which is I think some were longer one hour and 30 minutes some were shorter I think the shortest was around I think 47 or mm-hmm. 45 minutes that was a very short chapter but okay. overall I think it's it's pretty um, incredible that we as you said the all audio book or the book is uh, like what nine hours yeah and we uh, managed like to that, yeah. triplicate the uh the time so pretty incredible <laughs> yeah so uh if, if you uh if you're reading along with us in this experience then uh you've spent more time listening to us than you have pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm not sure if that's a good thing or not like he I hope the people, whoever is listening and reading the book as we are, or at least read the book, uh, is enjoy. Yes, Hopefully we've yes, added absolutely. to the experience. <laughs> and just final st- uh, just point on before, um, I think we already talked about this, already did in the very beginning, but about my predictions. Because I was, we were laughing in the very first episode that I should do statistics on the... Uh, on the predictions. I didn't, obviously, because I'm a lazy bum. But um, I thought that Although my predictions on things were accurate, my timings were off. Like uh, that, that's that's I think that's the best conclusion I can come up with is that the timings were I, I was maybe sort of short, maybe two chapters, one chapter off the bit of um, prediction. Sometimes I was completely wrong because I didn't expect things to go the way they went, like you no know, Paul Titus situation, you know, whatever else. You know, it, it's all. Really, as I often said, the book can really sometimes jump to places that I wasn't aware of. But I sort of was okay, I guess, maybe, predictions. Yeah, yeah maybe at some point we'll <laughs> yeah, at some point we'll, <laughs> yeah. what the accuracy was. I think we was. will probably have to definitely check <laughs> yeah. the accuracy of things when, like, later books on, when about, like, the whole humans, pure humans versus hybrid war and conflict and stuff like that, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of those things won't be resolved until you've uh, the final book, I guess. The, the, the other books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, thank. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you've maybe learned to make some more open-ended <laughs> predictions. <laughs> I mean, Avoid if I do it to... even more open and or like vague, then it basically it's like will be like comments like, "Oh, you're not really predicting anything," because like anybody could say that, it's, which is you know. Which is what often the fortune <laughs> fortune tellers do. So I don't want to be that. Yeah, <laughs> cold yeah. reading the books. So I, I just thought it was interesting that you know, okay. th- how much time we spend, and it's being twenty four episodes every two weeks. Mm-hmm. So it's almost a whole year on the book. So I'm looking forward to the next several years of you know reading books and not being able to finish them off because Richard would and Richard withholding information against me. It's just like oh. <laughs> No, no. 
Yeah, I, we, we, uh, we never really came up with something for you to... to, to no, no, we haven't. <laughs> like, you read so many books ahead of me that I never have a chance to actually even get you back. So I probably feel like I'm going to end up in this position for the rest of my life. <laughs> yep, that's a, that's a, I have a, a race to Honestly, stay ahead of Michael stop. by reading everything. Stop that this. Read. Richard, don't. <laughs> but I do like. I do like. I don't mind. I don't uh, mind to okay. be honest. I I am enjoying this, and I don't mind um, having the. I like predicting stuff and doing this, so I'm good for now. Yeah, I, I, it would definitely be fun to try it the other way yeah. around. <laughs> but the thing is, right? You're good at withholding information. I'm a blabbermouth. I would be like, yeah, and this is this happens, and this is happens. I love spoilers, right? I'm the opposite person of spoilers. Like I thrive <laughs> on them. Be like, oh my god, this is happening, and just it. <laughs> pushes me forward to do stuff no i mean in in like i usually I, like i don't really care about spoilers in f for myself as it were but uh, I, i've kind of learned to be a little bit more careful about them mm -hmm. for other people who care about them in more specifics Cause, i mean I, i'll enjoy something that i'm spoiled on even if i'm yeah because I, I i like the way that yes. know, the specifics of it play out but yeah so for this particular dynamic right i, I had to try and remain <laughs> secretive about the color i mean it's not like it's a mystery so it's there's not like a big twist yes, yes. to get revealed as such but um it's uh yeah that's, that's been an interesting experience i thought i'd be uh <laughs> I thought i'd be more transparent also i need to remember i need to remind <laughs> you remember about that as um that uh that um that that moving platform that we were talking about and we were all like we we're but you were both really engaged with me talking about like the super conductivity and how it could be moving and then you're like uh, oh yeah, yeah i completely yep. forgot that it's actually basically a big slime it's just like, <laughs> like yeah <laughs> that's the yeah the other thing that contributes to my not actually knowing uh or, or not not being able to re reveal what's going on <laughs> is because i've forgotten <laughs> Yes, that's that's probably adds to yeah. the whole experience as well. You like you were like, oh yeah, this happened. Now I remember. Yeah, yeah because I hadn't I hadn't actually like properly reread this one before we mm -hmm. before we started on it. Uh, so um, and I was coming into it um, reasonably cold after having read it um, maybe mm -hmm. a year back or something, if that. Um, so yeah, I had I had a time to forget some of the specifics, yeah. which was probably yeah. useful. <laughs> It's uh, I mean, the only way actually, just thinking back to like the only way to get you back on the on this maybe not books but games. I think uh, I'm the more uh, uh into games, and there are like a lot of games that touch on biology. Uh, that yeah, yeah so that might a, be the only way for me to get you back is basically make you play a game and then discuss um the game maybe like in three or so chat you know episodes or something like discussing part. Uh, but that's probably the only way for me to get you back on this. Yeah, break it up by some yes quest lines yeah. or something. But yeah, yeah, no, that could be a that could be an option. <laughs> no, well, that, I mean, that's the thing. But that's the, the thing, right? <laughs> Finding the time to play the games is like another twenty or so or thirty hours of time just to do that. So it's uh, uh and of course I would make you play every yeah. single sub quest and you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh dear, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, but yeah. So let's go to the book two, chapter yes. one prediction. Um, Me? Yeah. Yes, let's so do that. I was thinking about this for a while actually before I wrote it down because I, the way the book ended, right, as we all just described to everyone, is that you no know, Lilith going off, you no know, the going back to home, being pregnant, right? And I thought two things. Mm -hmm. Um. And you can't mention they still have a lot of work to do. Um, I'm pretty sure... So I was thinking that Ada... The book will start that Ada, that Lilith has already given birth. Or it's the experience of giving birth. Or like the, 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 it's going to be either immediately after the book one finish. Or a bit some time passed. Because Octavia Butler often does this. That you know she passed... Some time passes, right? We're not, not exactly specific on this. But I think personally that the first... Um, chapter of the next book is still going to be involving when um, Lilith is still nice and pregnant, right? Like this, she's st she's about to pop, as we often then. Um, and this is the experience of her <laughs> giving birth and seeing her newborn daughter for the first time. And you know, although she still worry about this whole, it's a monster, it's unclean, blah blah blah, what it will be like. But the moment she sees the child first time, you know, like 
often women are like, you know, parents are like, shit, are we ready for the child or not? And then the moment they see the child, it's like the all everything breaks apart and it's like, yes, yeah, so this is this is my baby and you know, I I'm gonna protect with my you know, her life with my life, right? So yeah, I mean, that's also definitely no, no, no. I'm talking about both parents, thing, right? <laughs> but like, it's just like, like, but in this oh, yeah, particular yeah. case, it's just Lilith. You know, she's gonna be like, oh shit, this is my baby. Yeah, I'm gonna protect it no matter what. You know, anybody says, right? So this is where yeah, so the so the the male female reaction to having a kid is is different, but both of them get their brains <laughs> rewired quite a lot yes. by having a child. Uh, I think the rewiring <laughs> comes from the fact also that because babies crying nonstop and you have no sleep, so that's also. Yeah, Yes. Yeah, the sleep deprivation <laughs> helps. <laughs> but yeah, basically, it's brainwashing. Uh, so I, I think that's where yeah. the book is going to start. That you know, the idea of that they have to awaken more people and live has to prepare them. Um, is the fact that you know, I think there'll be some changes to the whole aspect of like not in a jail room anymore, like not, in the, but like uh, in the prison cell. But like, there's gonna be some aspect of that later. But the book will start with the. Lilith just about to give birth. Okay, interesting prediction. Yeah, a little bit of hedge at the beginning there with a possible. Time yeah, skip, because it's but, it's uh, hard to tell. Because like, going in on the... I mean, it would be really weird now if there was like, oh yeah, you know, Lilith has already given birth and the kid is like this and this. It's because it would really skip the important parts of like the development of Lilith's and daughter, her daughter's um relationship right that you know the, the important the most important times right so I, I still think i hope that it's what's where the book is going to start with mm-hmm. okay interesting right i will uh Damn leave it. you hanging for, for one Damn last time it. on this book i thought you're gonna be like <laughs> oh well you know you're too good at this Damn you. um so there's uh, one more bit of business mm-hmm. we should cover before we uh, we wrap up this episode, and that's that uh, we're going to we're going to do one episode hiatus. Um, uh, so the, um, when this would normally come out uh, next Sunday, we're going to mm-hmm. skip one one episode, and then uh, we're going to do a special episode where we talk about yes. the film Gattaca, uh, which is a uh, sort of uh, staple film in in like biology circles for for exploring the implications of genetic engineering and the yes, like. Yes, um, we decided that we will so, talk uh, about maybe take a small break from the books and just talk about stuff. Gattaca is first. We might in the meantime come up with more other movies and or other things to talk about. So it might be one, two or maybe a bit more episode, but we'll be back to the book um, too pretty soon. Yeah, we we don't know yet what the plan is after the the yeah. Gattaca special. Uh, yes, we'll, absolutely. Uh, we'll let you know. But look forward to the Gattaca. Um, I'm still yet to watch it. Um, Richard had already watched it, obviously, uh, but I'm looking forward to watching it because it, it. So far, what I've read so far on like reviews and like movies about biology, like Gattaca is number one in every single list. So definitely something to watch. Yes, yeah, it's the one that so, always comes up. <laughs> absolutely, going. We're look, looking forward to it. And on that note, okay. Thank then. you very much, everyone, for listening. We were Xenothesis. You can find this podcast linked everywhere on our website. There's all the links there. God damn, I messed that up again. <laughs> no, and in, in fine traditional yes. form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free to leave us reviews and, and like and subscribe and all that kind of yes. uh, stuff as well. Because you know, I want to grow the audience. <laughs> I was Michael Glinka. I was Richard Acton. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>